Hola! Hello, welcome to our Spanish lesson for today. First of all, you're going to be needing some equipment, so you'll need to pause the video and find some paper to write on and a pen or a pencil to write with. Then press play again when you're ready to continue. What we're going to be doing today is first of all revising our 10 forms of transport and then we're going to continue to put those into some sentences saying where somebody is going and how they're getting there. Today though we're not going to be restricted to our sentences saying I go because we're going to be using the verb ir to help us to say that lots of other people are going. More about that a bit later. First of all Let's have a revise of our 10 forms of transport. Escuchad y repetid. En tren. En tren. En cohete. En cohete. A pie. A pie. En moto. En moto. En avión. En avión. En autobús. En autobús. En barco. En barco. A caballo. A caballo. En coche. En coche. En bicicleta. En bicicleta. We're going to be putting these into some sentences then. And of course, we're going to be needing the to the part to help us to say where the person is going to. So remember, if you want to say to the, when it's a masculine place, you need al. If you want to say to the when it's a feminine place, then you need a la. Remember, you can work out if a place is masculine or feminine because the masculine ones will often have an o on the end and un in front. Feminine ones will often end in a and will be preceded by una. So here's four sentences. They all have a part missing. And the part that's missing is always the al or a la. What I would like you to do is to pause the video and see if you can work out whether our sentences need al or a la. Then press play again when you're ready to continue. Are you ready to see the answers? Let's have a look. So number one needs al because parque is masculine. Number two needs a la because piscina is feminine. We can tell it's feminine because it's got a on the end. Number three also needs a la because iglesia is feminine. And number four needs al because banco is masculine. We've seen, haven't we, how these fit into sentences, and this is one of the first ones that we looked at. It says, voy al banco en autobús. I go to the bank by bus. And we've practiced quite a lot of sentences which use voy, which means I go. Now, it's possible, of course, to change that for something else and to say that somebody else is going instead of I. To help us to do that, we need this verb. The infinitive is ir. It's one that we have noticed before. It's a very, very short verb. It's an infinitive ending and a verb all at the same time. And ir in Spanish means to go in English. Now, it won't make much sense in English, will it, if we have something that says to go to the bank on foot. No, it doesn't make sense. We have to change it in some way. We have to change the English so it makes sense. We have to change the Spanish as well. Now, those changes always happen in the same order. Whichever grammar book you look in, 
textbook, dictionary, website, wherever you look, all the verb forms will always be listed in this order. And we've got here the order of the English subject pronouns that the verbs are always listed in. So remember, a pronoun stands in place of a noun and a subject pronoun shows you which person is the subject of the verb. We have to learn these first to help us to work out which verb form we're going to need later on. So let's have a go at learning the order of these English subject pronouns. Escuchad y repetid. I, you, he, she. I, you, he, she. I, you, he, she. We, you, they. We, you, they. We, you, they. I, you, he, she. We, you, they. I, you, he, she, we, you, they. I, you, he, she, we, you, they. So, in English then, the subject pronouns are I, you, he, she, we, you, they. And verbs are always listed in that order. For example, the first one, I, you'll know from your English that I is always the first person in a first person narration. He and she are always the third person in a third person narration. So we have one, two, three, I, you, he and she. Now, you may have noticed while we were saying these subject pronouns that there are two that are the same. It says I, you, he, she, we, you, they. As we were going through, did you work out what the difference was between the two different you's? Because they are different. Have you worked it out? The first one is singular when you're talking to one person only. The second one is plural when you're talking to two people or more. It could be two people, it could be 22, it could be 22 million, but it's still plural. English is a little bit confusing because we use you to mean either one person or lots of people. In Spanish, though, there are two different words for the singular you and the plural you. You might also have noticed that all the people on the left hand side are the singular ones, I, you, singular, he and she, while all the people on the right hand side are the plural ones. We has to be you and some other people in a group, you plural and they is more than one person. Let's just try those English subject pronouns again. Escuchad y repetid. I, you, he, she. We, you, they. I, you, he, she. We, you, they. I, you, he, she, we, you, they. I, you, he, she, we, you, they. It's very important that you remember that sequence and that you can say to yourself, I, you, he, she, we, you, they, because that will help you to decipher any verb in just about any language because they're always listed in that order. So moving on, let's have a look at the Spanish verb forms that go with those subject pronouns. So they're listed in the same order. These come from the verb ir. Remember, ir means to go, but we're changing them so that they make more sense in our sentence. And we already know that boy means I go. So while we're practicing these, remember that order of the English subject pronouns and see if you can work out what these verb forms must mean. Escuchad y repetid. Voy, vas, pa. Voy, vas, pa. Voy, 
Was va? Vamos, vais, van. Vamos, vais, van. Vamos, vais, van. Voy, vas, va. Vamos, vais, van. Voy, vas, va. Vamos, vais, van. Voy, vas, va. Vamos, vais, van. So, have you had some ideas about what these will mean? Like we said, we know that voy means I go, because we've already seen that in quite a few sentences. What about vas, then? What does vas mean? Think of your English subject pronouns and the order they have to go in. That's it. It's you go when we're talking to just one person. How about va? What does va mean? Yes, it's he goes or she goes. It can also be it goes as well if you're talking about something that's not a person. So he goes and she goes because he and she always share the same part of the verb. And we've seen that before with things like tiene and es. Then looking at the plural ones, the first one we have is vamos. So what will vamos mean? That's right, vamos is we go. How about vice? Vice is you go when it's plural, when you're talking to more than one person. And finally, what is van? That's right, van is they go. So we've got I go, you go, he or she goes, we go, you go, they go. Now, you might have noticed as we were going through that we were saying two words in English, but there's only one word in Spanish. So we were saying I go. You go, he goes, she goes, we go, you plural go, they go. Now, if we didn't have the subject pronouns on the front, I, you, he, she, we, you, they, it wouldn't always be clear who is doing the verb because I, you singular, we, you plural, and they all share the same part of the verb. They all say go. He and she is the only one that's different because it says goes. So we have to have the subject pronoun on in the front in English to make it absolutely clear. In Spanish, though, you can see that all six forms of the verb are completely different. We don't need the subject pronouns because the verb form itself makes it absolutely clear who is doing the going. So vamos, for example, could only be we go. It couldn't be anything else. So no subject pronouns needed. Let's just practice these one more time. Escuchad y repetid. Voy, vas, va. Vamos, vais, van. 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 It's really important then for you to be able to say the pronouns in order, I, you, he, she, we, you, they, and for you to be able to say the six parts of ir in order, voy, vas, va, vamos, vais, van. Now it's time for you to make a written record of those six parts of the verb. So on your paper, I'd like you to pause the video and then copy down these six parts of the verb, plus of course the infinitive ir, to go, at the top. Then press play again when you're ready to continue. So have you got those written down? They're going to be very useful to you. Now we're going to have a look at a story about different people going to different places and taking different transports. So I'm going to read the story first of all, see how much you can understand. The title is ¿A dónde vas? Voy al supermercado en autobús. 
face à la piscine à pied. Mi amigo Alberto va al estadio en barco. Isabel va a la tienda en moto. Mi madre y yo vamos a la playa en tren. ¿Vais al museo en bici, Iker y Ana? Las chicas van a la cafetería en coche. And that's the end of our story. Let's have a look at it in more detail and see if we can work out what it means. So the title of the story is A Donde Vas? What does vas mean? That's it. It's you go singular. And we've got it in a question this time. And the question word a donde means where to. So where to you go? What do you think the question is saying in sensible English? Where to you go? That's right. Where are you going? A donde vas? And there's our form of the verb ir. So the first page said, voy al supermercado en autobús. Where's our verb first of all? Which word is it? That's right. It's voy. Voy al supermercado en autobús. So who's doing the going in this sentence? That's it. I go. Where are they going? To the supermarket. And how are they getting there? By bus. I go to the supermarket by bus. Let's have a look at the next page. Vas a la piscina a pie? We've got a question there, but there's still one of our verbs in there. Have you spotted which word it is? It's bas. And what did bas mean again? We had that in the question at the start, didn't we? You go singular. That's right. Vas a la piscina a pie? So you go to the swimming pool. And what's a pie? On foot. You go to the swimming pool on foot. But it's got question marks round. So how would we ask it as a question? Do you go to the swimming pool on foot? Have you noticed that in Spanish, the statement and the question are the same? It's only the question marks and the way you say it that makes it different. Vas a la piscina a pie. Statement. Vas a la piscina a pie. Make your voice go up at the end. It becomes a question. Let's look at the next page. Mi amigo Alberto va al estadio en barco. So, we need our verb, don't we? Have you spotted which word it is? That's right, it's va. And what does va mean? It's he goes or she goes. So, let's have a look at what this sentence means. Before va, it says mi amigo Alberto. Now, you've met mi amigo before. What does it mean? That's right, my friend Alberto goes al estadio. Can you remember what that one is? To the stadium en barco by boat. And the next one. Isabel va a la tienda en moto. Where's our verb here? That's it. It's va again. Isn't it? What's the other meaning of va? We've seen he goes already. So what's this one? That's it. She goes. And we know it's she because we've got the name Isabel. So Isabel goes a la tienda to the shop en moto by motorbike. And the next page. Mi madre y yo vamos a la playa en tren. So where is our verb in this sentence? That's it. It's vamos. And what does vamos mean? It's the first one on the plural side, isn't it? That's it. We go. So vamos a la playa en tren. We go 
to the beach by train. But who's doing the going? It says mi madre y yo. Two people there because we've got e in between. Who is mi madre? Is it my mother? Then we know e is and. So who must be yo if it's we go? My mother and I. That's right. If you want to say somebody or other and I, you use e yo. So my mother and I go to the beach by train. I've got another question here. Vais al museo en bici, Iker y Ana? But there's two names there, aren't there, joined with e. So we're asking more than one person. Where's our verb in this sentence? Have you spotted it? Vais. Vais al museo en bici. Are you going to the museum by bike, Iker and Anna? And because we're talking to two of them, we need to use vice, you plural. That means we've got one more page left. Las chicas van a la cafeteria en coche. So where's our verb in this sentence? That's it. It's van. And can you remember what van means? Yep, there you go. Now, who is it that's doing the going? Las chicas, who are they? The girls go, where are they going? To the cafe, and how are they getting there? By car. Can you see then that all of the rest of the sentence, how to say to the and how to put your transport on the end, that stays the same with all the different people. We're just changing voy, I go, to something else. And that helps us to say that different people are doing the going. Let's just have one more practice then of our new verb ir, the verb to go. Escuchad y repetid. I, you, he, she, we, you, they. I, you, he, she, we, you, they. Voy, vas, va, vamos, país, van. Voy, vas, va, vamos, país, van. Well done. So before our next lesson, have a few practices of chanting I, you, he, she, we, you, they, and voy, vas, va, vamos, país, van to yourself until they are really well and truly stuck in your head. Fantástico. Muy buen trabajo hoy. Very good work today. Adios. See you next time.